Hello Commanders and welcome to this video for Infinite Lagrange. Today I want to cover three topics. First um, will be a small addition to the last video. Demon gave some very interesting input for that. The second thing, maybe the most important for you, I got a very interesting inquiry from a company that is looking for some veteran players to be interviewed and they do pay some nice bucks for that. And then the last one, the main one, are things you should yeah, consider while you are in the hub. Um, things that sometimes even I do forget. So let's go directly into it. Let's start with the interview part because I think that's the most interesting one. Now I already put a post on my Discord so I'll quickly go over there. Um, there's a company that is looking for veteran players from the US. Um, if you are a player, mobile gaming player from the US, you can go to that link, fill it out and um, they already pay you 20 bucks if you get through the screening phase. Now, after that, they want to do a two hours interview, which they pay up to 100 or they pay $150 for that. So I think that is pretty good for just two hours of work talking about something you anyhow like. Um, I'll put the link into the description just as disclosure. If you get selected for the interview, they will also pay me a little bit of money. Um, so I'm not doing this completely for free. Okay, let's go into the other two topics. Um, you probably remember the beginner fleets I was talking about in the last video, mainly frigates. And I use usually the Carillion special here as frontline tank. Now Demon came up with a very interesting point. Um, the Carillion special is not really good in doing damage. It's good in evade and it has a very good bonus to be not hit, so reducing the enemy hit rate, but it only does base 1500 damage. If we take a look into the Rayliard stealth type, we do more than double the damage and we also have some really good... Um, base evade we have the 35 percent already here for the base evade and um where was it in the common flush we do have another 35 percent so we have a very high evasive rate two things we have to consider so you do not get all the additional or not as much um hit rate reduction and this is a middle row ship so to use this as tank all the other ships should be in the back row, which for my setup will work very nice. The Xeno Stinger is in the back row and also the Noma that I usually then use for repairs is in the back row. I um, think this is a pretty clever setup because it increases the damage and you don't need the best tank early on in game. Um, the Railyard Stealth also is great. I mentioned this for the system damage it can do. So looking at this, it attack system, it's projectile, 200 damage per hit. So it will do some pretty nice damage. Um, medium efficiency against primary weapon systems. Now the tech priority is big ships, carriers, battle cruisers and cruisers. Um, early on in game, it doesn't matter. You will only fight small ships, but the additional damage there is pretty nice. Um, you do have um, high manufacturing cost for the Rayliard C. Um, was it the Carillion? Oh, sorry, it was a... I made that mistake in the Excel. It's a Rayliard B, not the C. Um, the special type might be a little bit cheaper to build, but it also does much less damage. So, yeah, that's that. Um, that was also one thing. I did make some mistakes there when it came to the type. So we can see this in the overview. The Rayliard Stealth is a C type. The Torpedo type is a B. I was talking about the Torpedo type and accidentally called it the C type. So the C type is a Stealth version that can do system damage, but it is um, projectile based. It's a Torpedo um, type of system. Uh, so it will go against armor while the torpedo version um, is using energy torpedoes and therefore ignores um, the enemy armor. Now, and that 
is the point that brings us to one of the things that I like to forget when we are in the hub. Um, the tech files during the hub do not contain all ships. Very easy to see here with a carrier, for example. Um, the Marshall Cruise is missing here. Same thing for the Corvettes. The T-800 is missing here. These are um, blueprints that are only available on certain um, servers. So they are not always available. Now, this can be good or it can be bad, depending what you want to do. If you hope to get an S-Levy 9, for example, it might be good that there are not so many other ships, because if you get a Corvette, the chance to get this one is better. Um, same thing for the fighter. I'm now, I really want to get the uh, high Redden's loyal. These fighters, if you look at the values, they are amazing. They have really, really good anti-ship firepower, amazing air defense. Um, so trying to get them might be a good point to do this during the in-between season while you are in the hub because there are other ships missing. But if you try to get a Marshall Cruise or some other ships that are not available here, um, double check the tech files if they have the ship you want and if it makes sense for you to already research this. Um, as always, you can already buy these, but um, they are now, as we can, uh, as we can see here, if I go to this tech file, it is limited to these ships. As far as I remember, this does not change when you go into season. Maybe someone did try it before. Let me know if you tried it and it does change. But as far as I remember, um, the limitations, they will stay. They will not change. Um, what else? Sure, you can still continue doing your Dawn financial plan. I would highly recommend that. And one thing I always forget is when you're in the hub, you can click on the expense to get into that overview. And in that overview, you do have all the options that are suddenly missing while you're in the hub. You can click on the Milky Way, on this universe icon. And you can buy your tech point restoration technology, you can buy your enterprise um, blueprint files, everything you want. Also, right now we do have some events there that you just don't see while you're in the hub. We do have the In Between the Stars event. It's only 20 um, Proxima coins we can get here, but we don't really have to do anything. You can just click there. Um, ignore this for the rest of the time, fly in the first asteroid, whatever. So I'm usually, as I'm recording this on the PC, the controls are horrible because I have to move my mouse to the left and to the right. So it is very, very difficult um, to do anything here. So I try to get killed as early as possible. And that's totally fine. Um, I'm ranking... Oh, 100 so not many people played today um, if i do this later the game it's usually 1000 plus but i do already get my 20 proxima coins so don't forget to check for the events that are running at the moment um, you will not see them while you are in the hub view in your hq or wherever you will only see them when you are in this overview to look from the outside um yeah which contract, which agreement you sign, this is up to you. We do have the option at the moment for the Droji Crystal or the Data Rescue. Um, we will see. This season will get very, very interesting. I already talked with Stampfire and we are going to start on the same server. So I hope we will get some very, very interesting content during that season. Now, I hope this was some good information. I hope there are a few of you that can um, sign up for that interview and I hope you will get some money there. Um, let me know what you are doing during um, the hub time. Do you save your tech files or do you, like me, um, directly research them? And as always, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and then I'll see you on the next video again.